remember, why are we looking at this left hand side? What are we going after? We don't actually need the whole thing. I only need a particular part of it, okay? So remembering that, I mean all of these, remembering that this times this really means you take this guy and multiply it by all of them. Then you take this one and multiply it by all of them and so on. There are very, very particular ones of those pairings that are going to give you constant terms, okay? Someone want to call out? A pairing that you can see? Very good. And if you got some colours there, right? This is what I mean by, bless you, making the logic clear, right? That guy and that guy, when they come together, the X's will all cancel, leaving you with a constant term. But it's not the only one. It's not the only one. This guy will also pair with this guy and give you a constant term, right? And you can keep going. Oh, this is why I wrote the second last term, even though I almost never do that. The second last term here pairs with the second term here. And then lastly, all the way up until the end, you get these guys pairing up. So tell me, how many pairs are there? How many pairs? I believe there are n plus one pairs. There's a pair of these for every single term. Okay, every single term matches up. Okay, so now I'm going to write, sorry, I don't need an equal sign there. I'm going to write those pairs, just the pairs, because they're the only ones that give me constant terms. So they're the only ones I care about, okay? So therefore, therefore, the left-hand side constant term is equal to... Now, be careful. Let's go to them in order. I started with the first one here and the last one there, okay? I'm going to get a binomial coefficient here, and then I get another binomial coefficient there. And then what happens to those x's again? They cancel, which is the whole point. This is the left-hand side constant term. Okay. So there's my first pair. I've got my second pair, which is this pair of guys. Right? Now, even though I didn't write the third last term, you can see what it's going to be. Right? Just to establish your pattern, it'll be NC2 and NC... Um, N minus 2, minus 2, plus dot, dot, dot. And then you finish out the sequence by coming back to these guys. So you're going to end with... N, N, and N, zero. You see, it's this blue and that blue, okay? So I won't underline all of them, but you can see that guy came from that red pair there. Do you see that? Okay, that's really meaningful. Oh, this line is crucial. Right, this line is crucial. Aha, but, 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 but. You're like, oh, that's not what I wanted. Uh-oh, this is what I wanted. But those are the same because of why? Because of, the, the, because of the symmetry identity, and I should write that because I'm trying to prove this thing, right? NCR is equal to NCN minus R, right? So if, for example, I put zero in here, I've got zero there, and then I've got NN there. So N zero, NC zero, and NCN are the same thing. So I've got that guy, and I've got that guy, and I've got all the rest of them all the way up to NCN. Okay. Wow. Well, there's a lot of terms there, but now I get to finally say equating constant terms. And I should say constant terms rather than just coefficients because you might be equating the x squared terms or the x cubed terms or who knows what you're going to be equating. So to demonstrate understanding that you know what you're doing, tell me which terms you're equating. That's a really good idea. Equating the constant terms and now all that's left is just to write down <laughs> the result you're trying to prove, right? nc0, that square, and that square, and that square, all the way up until the end, by some weird crazy Pascal's triangle like magic, will give you, go twice as many rows down, go to the middle term, and that's exactly what all those squares add up to, which is crazy, okay? That was a lot of work. That was really hard. This is what makes it harder identities. Now, I will point out to you, part of what makes this hard is because you've never seen any of these before. So, so many of these steps are like, what? Why? Why do we do that? Okay. So, I'm going to ask you to have a go at parts A and B of the first four questions in this exercise because you'll practice these two skills. Picking a substitution, sometimes, just to be nice to you, they even tell you what substitution to use. And secondly, which is much trickier, Comparing coefficients, right? Which coefficients are going to give me the ones that they seem to be particularly after? Okay, so first four questions, parts A and B.
That means you'll skip a whole bunch of parts. We'll come back to those when I show you, this is method one, substitution, method two, comparing coefficients. There's a third and final method, which I will show you later, okay?